Are you eating low calories and doing a lot of exercise, but your body is not moving? Watch this. Our next caller is Nicole from California. Hey, Nicole, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, I really appreciate you guys, first of all, taking my call. Uh, I started listening to you guys about a year ago, and I stayed for not only the fitness content, but you guys are just super entertaining, so I really appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, so I'll start with a little bit of background. About three years ago, I decided that I want to lose some body fat. So I started doing, you know, your typical like orange theory classes. And then I finally got into resistance training. And so that led me into a bikini competition, which I did about two years ago, which was literally right before COVID hit. So about two weeks later, COVID happened. Uh, so I find I found myself dealing with a lot of like binge and restricting type of eating and a little bit of like body dysmorphia. And so after fast forward a little bit after that, listening to you guys, I decided to bulk to speed up my metabolism because I was still eating pretty low calories. And so I was I when I did the bulk, I got up to maybe a little under 2000 calories. And I had put on a lot of unwanted body fat. So I did that for a couple months and decided that I just felt really uncomfortable that I wanted to cut. And so about four months ago or so, I decided to cut. And when I did that, I was starting from about 2000. So I didn't really have a lot of wiggle room. And I went down to about 1700 at first and then slowly progressively went down. And for the last six weeks or so, I've been around, I would say anywhere from 1200 to no more than 1400 calories. And I've been doing consistent resistance training. So I've been doing your guys' uh, MAPS anabolic. And so, I kind of feel like I'm stuck because I'm not seeing any more progress and I don't want to add any more like cardio because I'm already doing about 15,000 steps a day and I don't want to obviously cut my calories because it's already pretty low. So I'm just feel like my, so my question is I'm pretty stuck at what I should do because I know I maybe should do another bulk or reverse diet, but I don't want to put on more body fat because I still want to lose about 15. Um, and so I just, where do I go from here? And um, should I stick with anabolic or try a different program? Yeah. Nicole, when you did your bikini competition, you said that was, I, I see you wrote up here, it was about two years ago. Do you, yeah. how long was your prep? And do you know what you what your calories ended up with at the end uh, of that prep? Like what were you eating, you know, right before the competition? How long did, did it take you to get, I don't know, stage ready? Uh, yeah. So before I did, uh, competition. I was just like a regular client with my coach. I did, I was on a diet, um, just counting my macros. And so my prep, so I went straight from that into a prep. And in hindsight, I should have reversed out of that. But so I was doing the prep for maybe four months. I think my calories at the end of my prep were anywhere between like maybe 800 to a thousand calories, maybe even lower. I was doing hours of cardio, um, on top of resistance training six to seven days a week. And so that, and then coming out of that, I just, my metabolism was all over the place. And so, yeah. um, they were, yeah, it was fairly low. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I'll go, we'll, we'll give you some good news and some bad news. So we'll, I'll start with the bad news first. Okay. Okay. You, you, all right. you went from counting macros to a prep period, which was four months long, which really was just an extension of your diet. It just got more and more severe um, because you said you were counting calories to begin with. Then you added lots of cardio, lots of cardio, lots of exercise. Um, and now you're dealing with kind of the, the, the consequences of that. Okay. So that's the bad news. The good news is you can come out of it. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. There's some, you know, I, I remember talking to Jason Phillips about this. He's the, the founder of NCI Coaching. He deals a lot with people in this category. And he says, you know, he feels like the body, the central nervous system kind of has a memory. And you have to get your body to the point where it feels like it doesn't need to hold on to everything. So it might take longer than you think. And you're going to gain body fat, unfortunately, in the process. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck here uh, for a long time and it could potentially get worse. Now, how do we minimize the fat gain? We slow it down. It might take a while, but we go real slow. So a reverse diet for someone like you would look maybe something like this. Right now you're eating you know, 12 to 1400 calories. I wouldn't increase your calories yet. I would just reduce your cardio and your steps. 
Start with that. Slowly cut it. Maybe cut it down by a quarter. See how everything works. When you feel comfortable, cut it down by another quarter to the point where you're not doing any deliberate cardiovascular activity, still eating 12 to 1400 calories. Then I would slowly raise your calories by maybe 100 a week at the most and watch what happens. But you're, you're probably still going to gain some body fat. Your body still needs to feel safe and comfortable. It may be a long process. I had a client that I did this with over a year. It took us over a year to kind of get her body out of what had happened. But at the end of that year, uh, man, things were working a lot differently. She, she was you know eating eight to 900 calories more than she was before. She stopped her twice daily cardio sessions. We were only lifting weights three to four days a week, which is very different than what we had started with. So that's what we're kind of working with. So you're going to have to you're going to have to kind of go through that process. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck where you're at. And it's going to be like this until you back out of it. And, and you know, I, I don't know which one's worse for you, right? Sticking where you're at now or moving out of it and maybe setting yourself up a little differently in the future. Yeah, I would want to dive in a little bit too on the, the body dysmorphia and your experience when you gained weight. Um, did you happen to test your body fat during that time when you went on your bulk? Um, when I was doing the prep, I was – maybe around 6%. After that, I never tested it. Um, I had a bad, I didn't like the scale at all after I went on prep um, yeah. when I came off. So I saw, I saw the scale increase and I knew it was going to happen, but in my head, um, I just didn't like the way that that felt. So I gained obviously some weight I needed to, but I didn't test my body fat after the prep or after the competition. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I did gain weight, but in my head it was too much. And so I kept trying to like slow it down, but I couldn't because I kept eating and then restricting. Uh, so I dealt with that cycle for a while. Yeah. So I, this is the tough part about, um, you know, this is like a situation where, you know, I wish you were a client of mine and we were talking the, through this. I literally was just talking to a client of mine about a similar thing. She wasn't a bikini competitor, but she has these extremely high standards for, what her her body should look like and she puts on you know two or three pounds uh extra on her body and she all of a sudden starts telling me how out of shape she is and i said you know you're not you're not actually you're in incredible shape uh i said and you get to have glasses of wine here and there and you get to go out to dinner and you don't do hours of cardio and you're able and you're in your 50s and you can maintain this this body i said a lot of this is in your head and you, the way you view yourself, and what I would, what I'm wondering is, you actually might have been on the right track when you decided to bump your calories, and you started to gain a little bit of weight. And the reason why I asked about the body fat percentage because this happens with some of my clients, they put let's say 10 or 15 pounds on, and there's maybe their their jeans are feeling a little tighter or whatever, and they start freaking out. But then I body fat test them, and of those 10 to 15 pounds you know, 80% of it was muscle. And yeah, we put a couple pounds of body fat on there too along the way, but most of it was muscle, which means I'm moving you in the right direction towards speeding your metabolism off. And I would tell that client like, hang tight. We're doing the right thing right now. I know this feels a little uncomfortable for you. I know you look at yourself in the mirror and go, oh, I don't like the way I look and I'm putting on too much weight, but you got to trust the process. We're going to lean out. We're going to come back the other direction. But right now I need us to speed our metabolism up because we're not in a healthy place for long term. And so you might have already kind of been on the right track. I wonder how much of that weight that you put on was actually as bad as you think it is and uh, and how much of that is just in your own head of thinking that you were just putting on too much weight. Yeah, the other thing too, Nicole, is sometimes I'll get a female client that's 12% body fat and she gained weight through a reverse you know diet and went up to 19% body fat and freaked out. 19 is healthy, 12% is not to maintain. You know what I mean? And we tend to have those standards. Let me ask you a question, Nicole. Do you think you could focus on purely on strength and performance, if you took your mind off of how you looked, forgot everything else, do you think you could just focus on getting stronger at the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat? Would, would that be a possibility? Uh, definitely. I think that, well, when I was doing the bulk last year, um, I felt myself getting stronger, uh, obviously, but I also saw myself, like, my clothes weren't fitting, I was gaining weight, but I did get rid of the scale I didn't want to associate that with yeah. like how I felt. 
Um, so I did, I, I did like the way that I feel and I was lifting. Now I'm obviously not lifting so much in my head. I feel like I can do it, but my strength is just not there. Uh, so I would love to get back into focus on that. So currently I am doing anabolic. I don't know if you recommend me trying something else for that while I'm increasing my calories. Yeah. Let's put you on MAPS Powerlift. I was just going to say, I'm glad you yeah. went that way. Because I was yeah. saying, anabolic is mm -hmm. fine, totally fine. But I think Powerlift would be good for the mindset. It's pure it's all metrics. Yeah, 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 all you're thinking about is getting a stronger bench, getting a stronger deadlift. Getting a, yeah, so I love that suggestion. Yeah, try this. Try following MAPS Powerlift. And if you're able to for the next three months... Just see how strong you could get in the major lifts. And like, Nicole, have have some or not? Sorry, have some compassion for yourself too. Like know that if you are getting stronger in the gym, you're building muscle. And initially, if you put on a couple pounds of body fat along the way, it may feel new. It may feel uncomfortable. You may be comparing yourself to when you were shredded and lean. And you got to get out of that that space and kind of trust the process because it does take some time to speed this metabolism up. It's not going to be overnight. And we are going to put a little bit of, of body fat on along the way. But that's okay when we get you up to eating seven, 800 more calories than you're used to. And then we cut you back down four or 500 calories. Watch how fast that body fat goes. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. It's been that's a uh, I've been thinking about doing that maps uh, program. So I'm glad you guys suggested that. So thank you. Yeah, we'll send that mm -hmm. over to you. Follow it and just focus on getting stronger and feeding yourself uh, for at least the next three months. See if you could do that. I think at the end of it, you'll see some positive some positive uh, results. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Nicole. Yeah, oh, it was I Nicole. Yeah, yeah, Doug yeah, was yeah, scrolling yeah. up Second and down over there, and I thought he scrolled on somebody else's name when I no, looked at No, you got it right. You got <laughs> it. Yeah. I, I tell you what, I think, uh, I'm, I've said this before, I think stage presentation competitions are for the worst for most people. Yep. I mean, if you have any, any body image issues at all, you're going to get on stage and get judged by how you look with other people. And judges are very blunt. That's what they're supposed to do. They're going to tell you, oh, your glutes don't look good. Which, your back correct look me good. if I'm wrong, but it seems like the majority of people that, that sign up have yes. these underlying. It attracts it, it, it the attract, very people. It attracts those people. Yeah. Yes. They don't wanna, and I knew it right away. When I mean, she didn't track her body fat. She said it already. She was getting stronger. She was at 6% when she was competing. That's, that's beyond unhealthy. Yeah, she was probably yeah. right on the right track. Yeah. She probably jumped all the way up to 12 or 14%, yeah. which is still lean as fuck, you yeah. know, and got stronger and metabolism was going in the right direction, but freaked out, freaked yeah. out because still comparing herself to this, this shredded lean body that she once had when she was on stage, not realizing that she's probably healthier, stronger, and in a better position when she, when she was increasing the calories. Yeah, you know, this yeah. reminds me of like when you, you guys, you know, back in the day with Michael Jackson, people would look at him and say, "Who? what doctor, what plastic surgeon continues mm -hmm. to do surgery on his face when he approaches them? Like what, what lack of integrity? Who isn't telling him, you're, this is a problem, we're doing too much. That's how I feel about these idiot coaches. You're training this lady, this girl. She's already dieting. She says, I want to do a show. Yeah, no problem. And you beat the crap out of her and have her eat, have her eat 800 calories a day. Uh, like, it's about the money, dude. Yeah, you mm -hmm. like it's about the it, money. It is not even that much money in it. Like, uh, how big well, of I an mean, for, idiot do you have to be? Yeah, but I mean, uh, trainers love it because it's you're committed to me for three to six months, depending on how long we do the prep for, what about that? And it's you project your own shit onto other people. Yeah, it's just no. absolutely terrible. I, I mean, would never coach someone that it's way. It's flooded. Yeah. It's flooded with this. I mean, it was a, a, a obviously at the beginning, we used to talk about this all the time, right? When I was in the thick of all of it. Um, it was probably a, a conversation in every other podcast early on uh, when we first started the show. But yeah, no, it's I, it's more common than not. It, it's it would be yep. rare yep. I would run into a coach in that space that I was like, oh, he or she's telling giving really good advice. For the most part, it's shit advice, and it's to the wrong people. It's like the worst people. It's like the people that do not belong competing at all right now on many levels, not just body dysmorphia and understanding nutrition, not enough experience in, in lifting yet. It's like you take somebody who's been lifting for a year or less, haven't even put muscle maturity, doesn't have a physique they've built yet, and then throw them on an extreme diet to get on stage and com and then compare themselves. And work to the crap out of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just yeah. like, dude, yeah. I come mean, on. this is the process. You, you sign up for one of these events, you hire a coach who doesn't understand health and really has probably their own, uh, body image issues. Then you have to send them pictures, I don't know, every week about of you in your underwear looking at the camera, and then they're going to break your body down 
every week. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, you're going to be competing amongst a bunch of people yeah. who have their own issues. And then you have a bunch of judges who are just going to be very blunt. And then you're going to put yourself on stage. Like you want to talk about the perfect storm for right. creating problems. Like I, whenever I, 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 I have yet insecurities even further. Oh, I have yet to meet someone who's told me, Hey, do you think I should compete? I have yet to meet someone and be like, yeah, it's a good idea yeah. for you. It's almost always, it's actually, like, the, it's always like a uh, Hollywood of this fitness space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. just for the most part, it's a fucking cesspool, dude. There's very, there's very few people that are doing it well, doing it right. And are thinking about, and by the way, it's a sport. It's impossible for it to be truly healthy. M most That's sports, true. Sure, all sports healthy. are extreme, aren't right? They? And mm -hmm. it was something that I, I used to talk to my audience about, my little audience that I had back when I was doing that. And it would be okay. I did this as healthy as I could. Here we are heading into the final two weeks. I know and letting you know that this is not something anybody should go and do because it's not healthy. It's not ideal. But it it attracts uh, the people that struggle with this the most, and I think it just perpetuates the problem. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.